um, please to yes, it's coming. Um, uh, introduce the final speaker in this uh, morning session, uh, Leonardo Capani uh, from the University of Parma, and you know I think that the the topics flow on really quite nicely. So uh, he will be discussing synesthesia. The paper is entitled "Setting the Stage for Synesthesia." Image as hallucination and mind as reducer in the work of Hippolyte Ten, uh, 1845 to 70. Okay. Which, which one is? Yes. Please go ahead. Okay, so thank you. And good morning to everyone. Thanks in particular to the organizers of this meeting. Although unfortunately, uh, this is the first day I have been able to, to attend. So I start by apologizing for the uncertain English and for some minor changes from the initial abstract. Uh, this is still uh, ongoing research that uh, I have been doing mostly in Italian and French until now. Uh, however, I think uh, it may be useful to switch to English for obvious reason of accessibility and because it is in this language that most of the current debate on, of, on synesthesia uh, is taking place. Even today, in fact, uh, although synesthesia has returned to interest uh, a wide field of uh, multidisciplinary studies, uh, at least since uh, the 1980s, after several decades in which, uh, partially because of the prevalence of uh, behaviorism, it was seen as a classic example of romantic science, it is not very clear uh, what is actually to be understood by, by this label. Uh, so, let us uh, start with uh, an attempt to, the, to define this phenomenon and some, some of the most pressing issues uh, uh, surrounding it. So first, uh, it is uh, usual to present synesthesia uh, as, a per as a perceptual mode of contamination between different sensory modalities. Uh, that is, synesthesia is a particular type of, uh, of experience whereby a stimulus uh, called inducer triggers not only the percept uh, with which it is normally associated, such as sound as a result of uh, an auditory stimulus, but a, further, but a further content called concurrent that belongs to the same or another sensory modality. Uh, examples of synesthesia are perceiving letters or numbers uh, constantly associated with a certain color, uh, unimodality, feeling a taste uh, also through the sense of touch, multimodality, or experiencing, uh, experiencing an orgasm through geometric shapes uh, and so on, for dozens and dozens of possible combinations. Uh, combinations that tend to be felt vividly, automatically and continuously over time, uh, the same even years and years apart, but that uh, vary some of the features from individual to individual. Um, indeed, what characterizes uh, synesthesia seems to be its, uh, its extreme uh, idiosyncrasy. Uh, while the contents of the concurrent percepts um, uh, are most often generic, like uh, spots, halos, uh, textures, spirals, uh, smells and tests that uh, are more or less unpleasant, uh, as we see in these uh, images, these are uh, also those who deal with more cognitively complex experiences, such as personalities, uh, emotional states uh, or uh, sexual genders. Then there are so-called uh, associator synesthetes uh, who experience the competitor, uh, the concurrence with the mind's eyes, that is in their inner space, and uh, rarer projector synesthetes, uh, uh, roughly 15% of the total, who instead seem to experience the stimulus somewhere out there in, uh, in outer space. Uh, or again, in spite of the fact that uh, most of these manifestations reveal a genetic origin, there are numer uh, numerous cases of advantageous synesthesias, synesthesias uh, that appear only from a certain point onward. Uh, and these, in turn, can be divided into acquired synesthesias that occur stably over time, as a result, for example, of certain traumas or brain pathologies, and induced synesthesias uh, that occur instead in a more temporary and sporadic manner under specific conditions, uh, for example, taking uh, psychoactive substances uh, uh, with hypnosis uh, or meditation sessions, uh, uh, period of sensory deprivation, and so on. Uh, further problems in giving a reliable description of synesthesia are those concerning the debate on uh, their actual prevalence, uh, divided between uh, those who consider the, this phenomena as extremely rare, uh, they would affect no more than 5% of the adult population, 
and those who uh, developing the insights of the, the so-called neo neonatal synesthesia hypothesis tend to consider them as the perceptual standard during the first months or years of life uh, because of the more extensive synaptic store of infants, uh, a standard that would gradually uh, disappear with age, except for a, a small percentage of, of individuals. Uh, or again, related to the preceding, um, there is a discussion of the possible points of contact, of contact between these experiences and all those processes of, of a cross-sensory nature, uh, cross-sensory nature defined as a tendency to match distinct uh, feature or dimensions of experience across different sensory modalities that we continually experience. Uh, for example, when we associate a high-pitched sound and uh, pointed figures on one end, and low-pitched sounds and rounded figures uh, on the other, the booga kiki effect, or when we pair light uh, things with louder sounds and darker things with uh, quieter sounds. Uh, the debate on, uh, about synesthesia could go, could go on and on. What is particularly surprising about these uh, vicarious experiences, seemingly able to challenge our habitual ways of conceiving perception, is the fact that, that they do not seem to respond to a distinct evolutionary purpose. The same letter A, for example, appears uh, red to some but blue to others, or a particular shade of green, or yellow with orange undertones, or it may evoke a smell of burnt wood. All secondary qualities, to use the classical language of philosophy, that seem to add nothing to our knowledge of the surroundings. It is this uh, apparent disconnection from true reality, uh, the one that can be faithfully perceived uh, by our senses, if conditions are optimal or good, that has mean that synesthesia has often been regarded as a mere excess of the imagination. It is difficult to find meaning in experiences that are so different from each other and so unconforming to what is felt from the rest of us. Uh, among many, many others, uh, one attempt uh, uh, as an explanation was offered uh, in 2014 by neuroscientist uh, Anil Seth, who used synesthesia to test his more general theories of the, of the, mechanism, of, of the mechanisms of our consciousness. Uh, the basic idea is that the process of perception consists neither in a passive mental representation of the external world, as traditional theories held, uh, nor in a more bodily and active exploration of the environment, uh, as some of uh, as some more recent sensory motor and an activist uh, theories hold, but rather in a process of constant anticipation of the possible causes of the sensory signals we receive from outside, a process that is that is uh, that it is uh, constantly constant continually sorry. Uh, recalibrated and adjusted according to the errors the brain registers between what it anticipates and what it actually gets. Uh, in Seth's words, uh, uh, perce perception has to be this process of inference, of best guessing, where the brain combines this soundless, colorless, uncertain information with, with its prior expectations, its prior knowledge about the way the world release. Uh, thus, perceptions are not just a reading or coordination of raw but still re reliable sensory data. These data do not, pro do not proceed primarily from outside to inside or from low-level processes to high-level processes, but rather in the opposite direction, from inside to outside, from higher to lower-level processes. The use of distinction between cognitive and perceptual, a perceptual dimension is blurred. According to this uh, predictive processing theory, which works through Bayesian statistical me mechanisms as a way of uh, interpreting under conditions of, uh, of uh, uncertainty, what we call consciousness is much less stable than it appears to, to us. It is an endless process of approximation to a mental horizon that is credible and uh, as meaningful that is as credible and as meaningful as possible. That is, as far as the environment allows us, controllable. Uh, the end of perception still remains uh, action, but, bo but both can only be achieved by a process of trial and error. Such a, such a perspective, according to Seth, uh, would, would uh, more effectively account for all those perceptual modalities that uh, do not seem to respond to uh, immediate sensory motor needs, such as dreams, after image, some forms of hallucination, and of course, synesthesia. In particular, it might explain why the vast majority of synesthetes are able to recognize the non-verticality of these experiences, 
that is the, the, the absence of a concrete link between the concurrent and their surrounding reality. Indeed, we should not forget the, that the concurrent never replace or merge completely with the, with the inducer, but rather uh, flank it. In a case of uh, graphing color, for example, the subject keeps the specific letter and the color it evokes uh, distinct. Uh, Thus, synesthesia would, uh, would be hallucinatory anticipations like all other percepts, uh, in their non-pathological nature, now admitted by all scholars, but referring to a much smaller repertoire of possible external causes. Synesthesias are perceptual uh, hypotheses that are formed in childhood or as a result of a specific neuronal condition and that remain as such, uh, neither corrected or, uh, nor balanced by actual feedback by the environment. Uh, therefore, just as in the 19th century, synesthesias are often classified as a form of hallucination, although we, we are not sure of, of what kind. Uh, the situation, moreover, does not seem to be much clearer from the historical point of, view, point of view. To give just one example, in a recent collective work on the neuroscience of uh, visual hallucinations, within a list of 33 different manifestations, synesthesia is the only one that is not associated with a clear initial reference, uh, uh, so a work that first defined, it, defined its characteristics. Uh, and this, despite uh, researchers that have tried to reconstruct its past, uh, the stages that led in the late 19th century to the formation of a concept comparable to the present one. Among the, the many doubts that still remain, however, there seems to be four key steps uh, along this path. First, the Latin thesis of, uh, of the Austrian medical student uh, Georg Sachs, who in 1812, uh, 1812 testified an unprecedented case of association between serial elements, uh, such as number, letters, uh, letters, musical intervals, uh, and colors, as, uh, as a part of a natural history of two albino subjects, uh, he and his, sister, and his sisters. Um, Sachs, however, uh, does not go into detail about the, ca the causes of this phenomenon, and uh, due to his um, untimely death, uh, only two years later, uh, at the age of 28, he has no way of furthering or, or disseminating this, this research. For a specific first name uh, for this phenomenon, uh, despite the, um, the coeval interest of scientists uh, such as uh, Jan Purkin and Johannes Müller, or uh, writers such as uh, Ernst Hoffman, Edgar Allan Poe, or Théophile Gautier, uh, one would have to wait until 1848, when another medical student, the Swiss uh, Edouard Cornas, uh, retrieved uh, Sachs' testimony and labeled it uh, hyperchromatopsia as an excess in the perception of colors opposed to color blindness or dyschromatopsia. Uh, Cornas' uh, thesis, written in French but during a stay in, uh, in Bern, a city of German culture, has the merit of, gi of giving visibility to the phenomenon, but perhaps the demerit of confining it to an ophthalmic problem. Uh, things changed again in the early 1860s when two French doctors from Lyon, Pierrot and, Ch and Chabalier, shifts the perspective towards an investigation that is no longer optical, but psychological in nature, a non-pathological false perception. Uh, the reason for uh, this uh, shift are quite simple, uh, because the subjects of these studies, probably Peru himself, is shown to be in excellent health, particularly with regard to vision. Uh, thus, in 1864, Chabalier renames the phenomenon uh, pseudochroma, pseudochromesthesia, again from Greek, a false color felt as, as perception, and makes it explicit, uh, explicit a possible link with hallucinations. Uh, the protagonist of his article confesses to having suffered uh, in childhood from fantastic creations connecting different sensory modalities, uh, whereby he associated, for example, the tolling of bells with the stale uh, smells of a mortuary. In any case, uh, Chabalier never gets to equate the coloration of letters uh, or numbers to any visual or mental pathology. Uh, the last passage can finally be discerned in the articles uh, published in 1873 by another Austrian student, Fidelis <laughs> Nussbaumer, who more than 60 years after uh, Sachs' thesis uh, returns to describe uh, uh, the, colorf the colorful halos that two brothers uh, perceived since, uh, since childhood but this time uh, in an even more inex inexplicable way by listening to certain noises. Uh, one of their favorite games consisted of uh, attaching small objects to a string, uh, then making them resonate and trying to guess the, the associated color. Uh, with the support of his professor of comparative anatomy, Karl Brühl, uh, Nussbaumer is, uh, is thus the first to give uh, first-hand accounts 
of synesthesia, no longer covered by anonymity, um, accompanying them with a profile that is clearly of uh, one of mental health. And, and it was from these articles uh, that he inaugurated uh, the interest that was destined to invest all of Europe for the next uh, 25 years, the so-called golden age of synesthesia research. Uh, but as we said, we, there are still many questions that remain open. Uh, we could start with the, with the name uh, that emerged in the 1890s, uh, chosen for this manifestation, uh, a term that already existed uh, both in ancient philosophical and medical writings, where it indicates something rather different, closer to this concept of empathy or later self-consciousness. Uh, and uh, synesthesia existed uh, also throughout the 19th century as a sort of doubling of... Uh, Purely, purely physiological sensations felt in different eras. For example, when uh, sudden changes in lighting provokes uh, a tingle in the throat that could result in a, in a fit of coughing or sneezing. Uh, then there is the enormous interest that sensory contamination has been able to evoke uh, throughout the century from a cultural point of view, uh, visual arts, music, literature, theater, aesthetics, but also mystical practices and spiritu spirituality more in general. Or finally, the relations, the relations of this phenomena uh, with the neighboring or intersecting con concepts, such as those of sympathy, magnetism, hyperesthesia, degeneration, uh, the unconscious, or um, obviously hallucination. Uh, and it is precisely in, uh, in this sense that I believe it may be useful to return to a work of uh, undoubted influence throughout the second half of the century. Um, William James, Nietzsche, Freud were among its most attentive readers, but rather neglected today, uh, that of Hippolyte Ten. Uh, in the time that remains, uh, um, I will be able to touch only uh, on a single aspect uh, of this series, which is particularly developed in the, in the 1,000 pages of his uh, work uh, De l'intelligence, on intelligence, uh, in uh, 1870. 1870. Uh, so the relationship between sensations and images. Uh, the purpose is, uh, is not to look for a, a direct antecedent for uh, two sets of theories, uh, Sets uh, says, uh, I mean, Sets, the, the neuroscientist, uh, says he was inspired by the work of uh, psychologist uh, Chris Frith and struggles to trace further back, um, going in some cases um, to cite concepts uh, such as uh, uh, the unconscious inf inferences uh, uh, from von Helmholtz in the 1860s, uh, 1867. But I believe that some similarities between, uh, between the two, between, between Tain and uh, Seth, can, uh, can be further investigated, especially when not perceived. Uh, Tain, Tain uh, works, uh, work, which has always uh, astonished uh, um, and we may say indisposed by the eclecticism of its content, uh, open uh, with a section devoted to the nature of science, uh, defined as a present experience, which suggests to us the idea of, of a possible experience. So the, other, the author's purpo purpose is in fact to clear the field of those uh, pure or um, innate ideas, faculties, properties, uh, and so on, that have uh, often guided uh, psychology's analysis in order to reduce them to their essence as a mere group of names. Substitutes uh, we used to try to give order to reality. Uh, the methodology adopted, which was uh, rather innovative for a philosopher at the time, is to study the connection of uh, molecular uh, nervous changes with though, not uh, through introspection, on which he also relies, but starting from uh, those abnormal cases uh, that uh, allow us to shed light, uh, at least uh, indirectly, on some of our uh, inner processes. Uh, two minutes. Okay, thank you. Uh, ten points of departure is quite traditional and is to recognize not so much uh, uh, ideas but sensations as the starting point for our consciousness. Uh, what interests him most, however, is to investigate uh, uh, how these uh, simple cellular, cellular movement, movements uh, come to be transformed into devices capable of mediating between the inside and the outside into, into images. So, shiftly by nature, uh, the image is formed in the struggle between the th uh, two opposing tendencies. From the inside out, due to, uh, due to the continuous signals that, uh, after being uh, grasped by our, our senses, are transformed into conscious representations of hallucinatory nature, and from the outside in, uh, due to the mechanisms that reduce and coordinate these contents and allows them to be distinguished from uh, mere fantasies. 
that is 14 uh, images are a wreckage a phantom anico of primitive uh, sensations that follow one another incessantly uh, signs of all our relationships relations with uh, the environment um, he describes an hypertrophy of images, uh, not just visual images, that seem to be controlled only in two ways, through the correction of experience, uh, thanks in particular to the coordination of the other senses, and through comparison with the opinion, with the opinion of others. So according to, uh, to this perspective, as we have also already seen with Seth, perception can be described as a, as a subconscious rectification of unnecessary hallucination. Uh, the two operation, illusion and its rectification, follow so closely that they are uh, confused into, into one. Uh, the metaphor used by Taine is that of the mind as a polypus of uh, mutually dependent sensations and images, which develops uh, only in the latter, uh, only if the latter are directed by the movement agonists or antagonists, as in muscles, of neighboring images. Uh, a conception of perception as true hallucination that derives from uh, his earlier Le Philosophe Francais uh, the 19th siècle, uh, where he focuses on what he calls uh, Spinoza's law rediscovered by Dagal Stewart. Uh, as long as man is affected by the image of a certain thing, he sees his at pres as present, even though it does not exist. So images as simulacra of external objects or events come to us with an unf unfailing feeling of affirmation and belief. Uh, even when they seem to reflect no environmental conditions at all, such as the concurrent perception of synesthesia. So to conclude, uh, Tain's approach seemed to us an interesting test case, both of, for some of the contradictions of the century between positivism and spiritualism, between empiricism and, and idealism, psychology and metaphysics and so on, and for the still ongoing discussions on the status of synesthesia. Uh, it's not so much from the point of view of the uh, synesthesia uh, specialist, uh, specialist uh, given the times not yet ripe at the appearance of the work, certainly from uh, the more general angle of uh, the emphasis of intersection between sensibility, perception and hallucination, and on the need for a science uh, that uh, aims to make uh, every single state of intelligence the object of a monograph. Thank you. Thank you very much, Leonardo. So we um, we started a little bit late, so we'll, we still have time, you know, uh, something close to, to eight minutes for questions. Do we have some uh, questions for Leonardo? We didn't even get some more light as well. So I guess I will um, start with, um, I, I was, so I guess just wondering where, it's quite interesting that you look so much at the current debates as well. So are you really trying to make, are you trying to contribute to, to these? Yeah, no, because so I, I, find, historical I find quite, quite concretely as well. Yeah, no, I find quite hard to uh, set up um, an historical research without knowing, without any uh, previous orientation in the current debates, because it is uh, probably the main difficulty to uh, understand uh, how to, to treat synesthesia, in, uh, in what way uh, to understand uh, this, um, um, this, this uh, kind of experience and perception. Because there are also not only the um, scientific understanding of synesthesia, the, the psychological and perceptual phenomenon, but also the, it, ha it, it had a huge uh, cultural influence uh, so to the, on the uh, symbolist movement, on all the, uh, the uh, theosophy or, or the, um, the avant-garde in the, uh, in the at the beginning of the 19th century, of the 20th century. And so there is really, um, huge uh, historical material that is it is not still easy to to manage and to um, to make order of so this is only a um, uh, yeah a, a, a guess to um trying to to find a, a direction for future research yeah. and not a, not a <laughs> a precise um uh, result or uh, or findings yeah. and so Shaman? 
maybe this, this, this may not be so helpful for you, but it will be very helpful for me. I'm, I'm very curious about uh, Lyon. Uh, about, uh, sorry? This 1860 publication on, on synesthesia that was a central one thing in, in, in what you were saying. What you were saying, but I was interested in, I don't know if you have like a minute to tell us a little bit more about that, um, because maybe why I'm interested also, I'm kind of um, interested in, um, I work on the, the, the physiology, French physiology kind of up until like 1860 or so, and, and, I, and I'm having difficulty um, looking at how um, a lot of questions that were excluded from experimental physiology are taken up again afterwards in psychology. So it's interesting kind of the, maybe that, that publication by, by Kyung on how kind of ventures into the mind, I guess, from physiology. And is there something you can... Yes, this is uh, like um, the second, the uh, stream, uh, so the, the temporally, the, the first stream of research on synesthesia from a um, physiological point of view. Uh, and so, uh, Vulpian, uh, Nuel, the, the Belgian uh, like neuroscientists or, or, or um, uh, physiologists, and uh, they, they worked on, uh, um, um, on synesthesia as a um, Cl a closer concept to that of sympathy in a uh, scientific uh, uh, meaning and um, uh, also in, in for these authors synesthesia um, uh, is connected with the nevralgia with the um, pain uh, diffused in uh, in body and but we, we already um, didn't exactly know how the, the concept shifts from this uh, um, this area of meaning to a more psychological uh, and um, um, I, I don't I didn't mention it, the the, the um, pivotal work of uh, uh, Binet, Furma, and all the uh, late nineteenth century uh, psychologists that uh, uh, shaped the, the concepts of synesthesia as we already intend it um, almost uh, but to me it's really interesting to look uh, <laughs> look back at the the, the previous work uh, and uh, derived from the the, the Mueller Johannes Mueller uh, uh, distinction and yeah because the uh, the 19th century physiology in general could be defined as uh, anti-synesthetic uh, they um, they clearly um, attempt to define uh, uh, different uh, sensory areas uh, and uh, and um, uh, it is difficult to uh, accept uh, stimulus that uh, influence uh, uh, sensory stimulus that influence another sensory areas so um, but it, it has to be reconstructed this side of the sto of the story is um, even more uh, uh, uncertain and, and obscure for uh, for us uh, from from an historical point of view so it's um, quite interesting to to dwell and uh, well, we hope you come back uh, to another conference and tell us some more. Thank you. So let's uh, thank Leonardo.